Hi, today I will present to you the project Deep Camera-Based Movement Analysis for Remote Rehabilitation and Physical Therapy. The project is led by Professor Elena gutierrez farwig and I am Panagiotou Padopoulou. So a little bit about the project. It's part of the Digital Future Societal Innovation and it has a partnership with the Region Stockholm Innovation and the time frame is between 2021 and 2023. The overall goal of the project is to complement current methods for remote rehabilitation with quantitative measurements of patients' movement ability. So for the remote rehabilitation, we have identified two main scenarios that we are trying to tackle, live station and home training. For the patient's movement ability, we need 3D human motion capture to get more accurate data. It needs also to be markerless so it can be implemented at home and outside the lab. And it's also good to have a depth sensor to improve the estimations of in the 3D environment. To give you an idea about the depth sensor, it provides a point cloud of an object, here the human body, and this data can be used to improve the 3D estimations. We therefore use the Apple device that have such depth sensor and they use ARKit 6 to take these uh, estimations and also do the skeleton tracking. So here we go through the scenario of the remote live session. So initially we start the video call between the clinician and the patient. So here we see the clinician at their office and here is the patient at home. Then the patient sets up the device across themselves in the room and the clinician sees them through the camera. Then the patient performs the movement and the clinician gets lab data through ARKit and the developed app of the project. So here, for example, we can see that they see that the knee flexion is 45 degrees and it's 3 degrees more compared to the last time. Then also the clinician can give feedback and the patient receives it since it's a live session. And also we have the home training where the treating clinician follows up on the patient on the rehabilitation process and tailored a new program based on the range of motion, motion patterns and history of exercise performance. And this is possible because now the clinician has quantitative data since the patient does the rehabilitation through the app. Then the patient interacts with the app, follows the schedule with the exercise and the app provides real-time audio feedback on performance and visual feedback after each session. So here we see an app demo Right now we have three versions, one for the patient, one for the clinician and one for the data collection and I will show you a bit about the patient uh, view where the patient goes through their uh, schedule. They have like day one and day two and then inside day one they see the exercises, they choose the first one, the knee flexion and then they record the data so that the clinician themselves can later see that. So here we sit on the couch and we try to flex the knee inside and here we see like uh, and visual feedback on the angle and we see that it's not so good when the patient extends the knee. Once the exercise is done the user can go to the profile and then they see a feedback about this specific exercise for example. Here we see the duration, the minimal angle they achieved so and they see also how this changes throughout the exercise and they also see what is their goal. So the smaller the value, the more you manage to flex your knee. So they also get this type of feedback. So then for the current solutions, the one that use the Apple device with LiDAR scanner, we see that the standalone air kit is not accurate enough for clinical applications. And then as part of the project, we develop a machine learning algorithm uh, with predict that predicts the joint angles but we realize that this is not generalizable to more subject, to new subject. So instead we tried a different approach this time. And we want as a proposed system to have like, we collect the air kit joint positions from the phone, then we send them to the cloud where there's a trained machine learning model. In our case now we use a Gaussian process regressor. So then the predicts uh, the updated joint positions, the predicted ones. Uh, and then we improve uh, the results. The current implementation, and uh, now we collect the ARKit joint positions and we process them locally 
on the computer. Then we get the predicted joint positions and now we are able uh, to compare them with the ground truth and the AR kit initial positions. So a little bit about the method of the machine learning model. We had 18 able-bodied subjects instrumented with markers that walked on a treadmill for around five minutes. One of the subjects simulated asymmetrical walking, since we also want to see if the model is able to predict asymmetrical movements and not just the normal walking. Then both ARKit and Vicon data were collected simultaneously. A Gaussian process regressors were trained to predict offset of ARKit joint positions using the Vicon data as source truth. And then angles between the segments were calculated. For the validation, we used a repeated k-fold, so we trained on 14 subjects and tested on three, one at a time, so we tested on one new subject every time. And then we repeated that for six folds in the training. The analysis was inter-subject, so we trained on subjects, and then we kept subjects outside for the testing. So we did normal to normal, normal data in the training, normal walking in the test, and then we had the second option, normal training data, and then try to predict on the abnormal to see if we can generalize in a different movement. So here we see a little bit the machine learning results. So here is uh, a plot of a skeleton tracking. Um, so we see here the AR key data, the ground truth, which is the Vicon and the model prediction. So we see again how the AR kit is quite off. So here we have the normal to normal analysis and here is the error of all joint position, the seven joints that we used across the 17 subjects. So we see that for AR kit the error is around eight centimeters while for the model is below two and a half which is a significant improvement. Here we see the joint positions relative to the parent joint. So here is on the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. And here we see how much different is with air kit and the ground truth. And here we see that our model is quite close to the ground truth. And here we see also the joint angles. Here is for the right knee. And we see that the air kit has an offset that our model eliminates successfully and we can uh, conclude that there's a good generalization on new unseen subjects performing the normal walk. So we can train a specific subject and then predict a new one without needing to collect data for them. Here we have the results on the normal abnormal. So we train on normal subject and predict on the one abnormal that we collected data for. And here we see the skeleton tracking. We see that uh, the model prediction is better compared to ARKit, but it's still not exactly as the ground truth. So here we see the results. Uh, and here we have like the right knee. So we have the ARKit and this is the ground truth. So the ARKit is close to the ground truth. And here the model prediction is predicts, underestimates the angle of the NIM and it tries to imitate more like a normal walk. And here we see, for example, that it misses the pattern of the ground truth for the left knee. So we can say that we need more data for deviating and or asymmetric movements if we want to use uh, these models for different uh, for movements that have different patterns. So here are also some overall considerations about the setup. So AR kit skeleton tracking is only on back camera, and that means that it, it may be difficult for the end user to position themselves in the correct position so that they are able to uh, collect data during their exercise and also limits the real-time feedback to audio, since the user can only listen uh, and they cannot see the, um, the screen of the phone or the tablet. 
Also for real-time implementation, the model prediction time is important. So we need to make sure that it's fast enough, uh, the prediction. So for the next steps for the machine learning, we need to develop a model for asymmetrical movement, then include motion segmentation to evaluate key points in the movement. This is useful so in order to provide useful feedback for the end user, the patient, or also to have uh, to provide to the clinician also some data that they can use to treat their patients in a fast and easy way. Then for the app development, the next steps are to implement the model to the app, evaluate real-time feasibility, and if it's not uh, feasible to have real-time, also consider in-mobile alternatives for the model. Also further develop the user interface, both for the clinician and the patient. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to thank the team, the KDH Mobility Lab, for all their support and also the additional contributors of this project. Antea, August, Frederick, Mariah, David and Hao Cheng. Thank you for listening. <laughs>